lipstick, which adds to <laughs> the stress of things, shall we say. Um, it's hard sometimes to have time for yourself. But I've learned trial and error how to do that. So we're going to implement it now that I know, right? Our pumpkins. So let's see how many pumpkins we have, y'all. Because I might be able to keep pumpkins going around the whole week if we have enough of them. Like I said, I did not buy anything this year. I really didn't. Now, let me show you these. You see these acorns here? These are actually Easter eggs. You see that? Now, I have them on my welcome video. If you go back and look at the welcome video, you'll see them on my fall tree. But these are Easter eggs that I painted brown and just wrapped around with tool. But don't they look like acorns? See? Creativity now. Save me some money because I saw some acorns in the store and they wanted too much money for them acorns. And they just had to stay at the store. I just wasn't going to do it. Just wasn't going to do it. Um, like I said, I'm reusing most of the stuff. So you can see I have some pipe cleaner coming out of the bottom of this one that I hot glued in there. So what I'm going to do so that I don't have to use more hot glue is um, I'm going to take a pipe cleaner. I'm going to wrap it around that and twist these two together. Okay. So that way I can just use this pipe cleaner to attach this pumpkin. Right. And it's, it feels stable enough to where it should hold. So... I like to make sure that I have things going in all different directions as far as placement. You know, some up here, some in the middle, some even kind of facing down a little bit. So being that he already has a connection here, we're going to clip this because this is in my way. This little uh, zip tie that's holding our little friend together here. We're going to clip that right now. I was going to clip it anyway, but we're going to clip it now because he's in my way. We need him out of my way. Okay, push that back to the back. So I really want this pumpkin right here. Okay, we're gonna turn it like that. I want him right there. So let's go on to our wreath form. And we're just gonna take this um, pipe cleaner and wrap it on around. And yes, it's black. And so you might be able to see it a little bit, but we'll take some foliage. Foliage, is that what they call it? And kind of wrap that around there to kind of hide it once we're all done and once you're all done then you can go through and look at different things and see you know you happy with the placement and what needs to be covered and all of that good goody good stuff so let's see what else we have in the bag over here we got two more acorns over here so I know I want some acorns up there. Like I said, remember about balance. So I might put a few up there, like the two. These two most likely are going to go up higher with the arrangement that's going to go up there. And then these two here, I'm going to want at the bottom. And I do want to group them together. So they're tied together. These are also some of the ones from Easter eggs. So I got to find a good side because some of the glitter is starting to come off. And um, maybe wrap them around each other a little bit. Like this here. Get them all on there real good. Maybe just, well, I'll just try to tie it on there. Let's see how that works. A little knot there. Just so that they're together and corralled. Okay. Bow. There we go. See there? Okay. Now, let's see what I want to put. I think there's enough stuff already on this side. So I'm going to focus more so over here on this side. We want to have a little something coming off the side there. But before we do that, let's get our foliage set up. This is the this type of stuff. These embellishments, you want to put more so toward the end. Unless they're a staple part. Okay. So I'm going to pull off this green um, pipe cleaner <laughs> from... God knows how many Christmases ago. I'm assuming I use this for Christmas. Okay. All right. Got an orange flower there. I like how this drapes down like that because we're going to drape that down. Okay. So being that this stem is there, we're going to use this to wrap around our frame. So that way we don't have to hot glue. I'm really trying to avoid hot glue, y'all, because 
I burnt myself real good last time. And I know I'm going to have to use it eventually because I'm a crafter. So, but I try not to have to use it today. So if I can get away with it and make it through this whole project without having to use hot glue, honey, huh? that would be wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So, all right. Here we go with that. And we want it to trickle down here. You want to shape your leaves, you know. Don't just let them fall whichever way they want to. You take control of that. Control the leaves, right? This one, I want it tucked right under this pumpkin. Just like that. And I want a little more under there. So let me find a couple more things here to go under there. Maybe this little bunch of flowers that look nice under there. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Stick that right on down in there. And remember, we are connecting everything to our wreath form, y'all. Everything must be connected to the form because we want everything to stay on there. Especially being that this is going to be on a moving object. This is going to be on the door. You know how many times the door opened and closed throughout one day, right? So, you want this to be able to handle opening and closing and slamming. You know, kids slam doors sometimes. So, you want it to make it through all of the abuse it might encounter. Okay? So, that's that. Okay? Now, I feel like balance-wise... I'm going to have to get, find me some more turquoise to go somewhere on this side. So that might be the one thing that I actually might have to go by. Um, it's all about balance. Now, pumpkins. We can do this. Where's that other one? Oh, that's a pretty one. That would be, this is our center pumpkin. I've decided this is the center pumpkin right there. Okay. But you see that balance? See how? The three up there like that okay then we've got another pumpkin he's real shiny we could put him right over here somewhere now these i probably will have to i don't think i'll connect to him yeah i'll have to stick some hot glue in there but let's talk about our acorn we want our acorn this acorn we want it facing up so we're going to turn our, our reef around we know we want our pumpkins just like this so I'm going to have to insert some hot glue in here, which I'm probably not going to do tonight. That'll be a project for tomorrow. I'll finish it up. So you guys, it might be lighter in here tomorrow morning when I finish this video, but I just don't want to work with hot glue tonight, y'all. But I am going to poke a hole in there like that with these scissors. And then I'm going to take one of these pipe cleaners and I'm going to just push this pipe cleaner right on down in there. Okay. And then when you get the hot glue, you just shove it down in there. The more, the better. Okay. Shove it in there. It's just, it ain't going to hurt nothing. Just keep pushing it in there. Okay. And then you would put your hot glue. Okay. So I still want to place it where it's going to go. So I know that that spot is taken up. That spot is not available, so I don't try to put no other embellishment right there, okay? Now, this one, like I said, is just very pretty. We're going to put that right up in here, like that, hanging off to the side. I like for my tops to be hanging off to the side a little bit going that way. And then for my bottom part portion, I want it to swoop around. And then for this to have some things come kind of off this side like that, okay? So... We've got a couple of white flowers. Now, some may think, you know, I don't put white. This is fall. Yeah, but the season's still changing. So, you might see a white flower. And we're in California. So, we don't really have severe <laughs> fall. <laughs> it ain't like, you know, in other states where you really get the full just of the fall season here. You know, we lucky we get some colored leaves, honestly. Um... We are going to bunch all the white together because it just might look better right, like that on here. 
So again, I'm just twisting the, the bottom part to the wreath. Okay, there we are. Uh, this one's moving around a little bit. Don't worry, because I'm gonna go back through and um, anchor everything. So don't worry about that. Right now we're just working on placement, okay? Um, like I said, our acorn is going to go at the top. And we've got some more foliage here that we're going to be adding. More flowers. Okay. It's nice when you can recycle some of the things you've previously used. Um, makes your process a lot enjoyable. It's enjoyable for me when I save my money. So, I don't know about other people, but for me, it's more enjoyable. I enjoy doing the project when I know I got a good deal on something or can save my money a little bit. Okay. All right. It's looking very fallish. All those ambers and earth tones in there. Okay. Now we just stand back and just take a look. See what we want to do. Like I said. Well, then I might end up hanging these off on this side. I think I will. So the smaller acorns I am going to hang off this side. But I'm not going to do it with pipe cleaner. This time I'm going to do it with this this little um Actually, let's do it with this one. This one's the same thing. It's just thicker and a little bit more of a darker orange, which will give it a little bit more depth. Okay. So we're going to work with that. And you let me tell you, I'll throw glitter on something in a minute. So if I don't feel it has enough color of some sort, I will pull out some glitter and some spray glue and um, add it myself. So remember I said this is a process. So just work with it now. Just work with it. Okay. Got our eight corners on there. And hanging out now when the wreath is up i don't want to lift it right now because those are not anchored down but when the wreath is up then you'll be able to see how those hang down it'll hang down really nicely and if it doesn't we'll adjust it right so that's anchor that's anchor 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 okay i've got a really pretty orange pumpkin that i see going right in there which i think you think that's going to look good? Yep. We're going to put it right there. Uh, let's see. So this will be another one we have to glue in the morning because it doesn't have any way to attach it. So we're going to, again, we're going to poke a hole in the bottom with just one portion of the scissors. You don't want to use both because then the hole will be too big. Okay. And don't worry about um, making it wide. Just do it just straight in, straight out. And then we're going to feed our pipe cleaner into there. And then um, when I re get to the gluing section of all of this, we'll go ahead and we'll glue that down. So we're just going to push this pipe cleaner down in there. Just feed it in there. Okay. Even if it crumples up, that's okay. You just want as much in there as you can get in there. And sometimes you even want to take your scissors and just push it down in there. Just help it. Don't poke the hole bigger, but just help push that down in there or a pin or something that's not bigger than, you don't want something that's too big because then it'll make it bigger and it won't stay. So as you can see, even without glue, that's in there pretty good. So we actually probably could anchor it just like this. Let's give it a go. Let's see. So just feel with your hands underneath the form and make sure that you actually have it going around one of the little um, wiring um, of the frame, okay? And then twist it around itself to anchor it. Just keep twisting it around itself. And then even after this, I might add, like I said, some hot glue just to make sure that it doesn't move, stays where I want it to stay when it, when I, because when you sit this up, we'll put a hook on the end, the back of the door and we'll hook it on the door to see how it's gonna look when it's actually laying up right, 
okay? Because this gives a different look. And then at that point, we'd be able to do more adjusting and kind of put things where we want. Most importantly, we don't want the sign to be covered up, okay? Now, the bone here down the part where you can see the zip ties, I'm probably gonna just cover it with some of this deco mesh here. Let's see how that would look. Okay, probably just thread some deco this ribbon here that I could put, like again, like I, actually we might actually put some of this ribbon. And it is very orangey, but it's a different color orange than the one that's on there. And might add a little interesting depth. We're all about depth. Darker colors add depth. We're going to add some bling to this wreath in a little bit. Okay. So being that this is the top, remember, this is our placeholder. We want these three. One, two and three, this is the top of the wreath, okay? He's going there for sure. Um, we'll hot glue him on there tomorrow morning when I wake up. So this one, he's going at the top and I think I can be, maybe put him on. Um, up here from this pumpkin here to this one, we're not gonna put anything. That's just the top. We want all of the decor to go from one top of the side wrap around to the bottom and let that be that okay and that's just how i do it you know it's your wreath you can do what you want to but that's just the way i choose to go about it so if this is in there good which i kind of feel like this is in there pretty good too we can go ahead and attach this one and we might add some ribbon or something but we're not going to add any more um um what do you call it oh, out of the brain pretty show accessories as far as um this type of stuff goes so we're just gonna wrap it around you see me wrapping it okay i mean we might add a couple of leaves or something like that but nothing too much because we really want for that to stand out and if you add too much then you're not going to be able to see it we still might have to hot glue that into place but for now that's good for now so at least we have a place holder we know where it's going to go right so with this one. and then you don't have to do your first wreath this big. I've been doing this for a little bit. I ain't no extra expert, but I've done quite a bit of wreaths <laughs> in my my little life here. And so for me, you know, I got that whole go big, go home type attitude, especially being that, you know, it's going on the front door. You know, they say you want to have the biggest wreath in the, in the neighborhood. I mean, not necessarily, but yeah. I want my wreath to be one that stands out amongst the rest. And, um, you know, I don't want it to just blend in. So with this one, let me stand up and look at the placement of all of this goodiness. So we're going to have that flower pushed in right there. And we need a spot for our acorn. So first I was going to have them kind of coming out the top here like this. Um... I might still put, you know, actually, yep, that's where we're going to put those. So as you can see, I had some pipe cleaner on there. We're going to just take that off because we don't need that. Not because it's not needed, but because it's the wrong color. But what we will do, actually, this might actually be enough. So let's see if we can get down to the wire in here and attach it. And hopefully... It has enough to sustain and hold as far as strength goes. And if it doesn't, like I said, we can always resort to doing what? Gluing it. We can glue it. Glue is our friend. It's just not our friend when it get on our skin. Because let me tell you, if you are not familiar with working with a glue gun, please let me be the first to let you know, honey. It will burn the mess out of you. And it's hot, so when it happens, you can't even get it off. <laughs> you can't get it off. To, it's hard to get it off, okay? Now, when you're putting these flowers, make sure you're putting them at different levels. So like this one here, I'm going to push down a little more. Push that down in there. Because you want depth. You want it to look like, you know, there's different depths to the flowers, right? So, you push that one down in there. Let those acorns kind of just peek up from behind there. Um, don't be afraid to go in and kind of 
arrange your leaves. I might end up gluing a few. Um, that's the thing about when you have, when you get some of the leaves that are not the best quality, sometimes they don't, they don't stand up like they, the other ones would, but nonetheless, we can, that's still fixable. So don't shy away from them either. Okay. So we've got our white flowers here, uh, clustered together because in nature, flowers grow in clusters, right? Okay. So we've got our bottom swaying up to the side here. Um, we've got our acorns and pine cones on this side. We don't want to cover the sign because we want people to be able to read what it says. So with this, this deco mesh down here, we're going to just tuck it under itself and it'll give it more stability and it'll allow for us to be able to read our sign. Okay. We still want it to be puffy. We just don't want it to cover our sign. So we're just going to kind of tug it move it around a little bit until we get that in place and there we go okay happy fall y'all you can still see it okay this flower might be pushed down a little more just because i want you to be able to see his nose you want, like i said i want him to look like he's smelling the flower okay and so um what else i will be doing is probably some turquoise ribbon up in there because you see the colors that we have are the tans, the burnt oranges, and then the turquoise and brown. And so I wanted to make sure that I implemented all of those things into this wreath. So um, for now, we're gonna leave him like this for now. Aside from, we will be adding some more of this um, to him. And oh yeah, and I said also some of this orange. I forgot about that. So. Once I get all my stuff up on this side here, see how I got the ribbon kind of poking out from the top here? Even though it's, I want you to still be able to see that ribbon, okay? And so what you wanna do is you do the opposite with the other ribbon. So if I started on this side, or even, you can even overlay it like that, that will give it a nice look as well. So it all depends on your taste. Again, go underneath and find a spot to tie the ribbon where you can't see it, you might have to dig a little bit, okay? You can find a little spot, tie that ribbon to it. Now, the ribbon I used previously is um, a little bit more stiff than this ribbon here, okay? So what I think I'm gonna do with this ribbon, actually, is I'm gonna have it, having different little ties sticking out so you can see like pops of color you know what I mean so pops of this burnt orange because it's still in the orange family um, so I'm just going to make this longer and I'm going to tie it like like so just double tie it and remember if you don't like something you can always cut it off later so don't feel no type of way about it now I don't want it that long you know we kind of and then we want to make sure we cut it at an angle so this one, as you can see, has a little bit of sheer part. It has a little dimension and some interest. So you have to decide how long do you want that part? Um, uh, I'll say about the length of my hand from the root to the tips. So I'm gonna just cut it out a slant. I might have to get my actual fabric scissors for this because I want it cut correctly. Now, if you are in the line for some fabric scissors, Ginger, I think that's the name of these. Ginger, G-I-N-G-H-E-R-R. -R. I don't know where they made these, but I got them from Joann's, okay? And they cut like butter, they really do. Look at that, nice clean cut, okay? Um, I like my more, yeah, okay. And it's just let it just hang like that. And the same here on this side. You want to make sure they're going opposite. So if you cut this one this way, the other side, you want to cut the other way. Right? That's important. All right. And it doesn't look like much now. But once I add some more, you'll see the effect that it has. And the way to make it stand out and be more pronounced is to plump out your, your burlap. Right? So I'm going to do some of these around. So what I'll do is just now that I know the length that I want it. I can just take the length like this. That looks like it's good enough. 
and I can just cut. Okay. And then I'm going to see, I'm going to do it every other one. So I'm going to, I did that one. I'm not, I'm going to skip the one in between that and I'm going to do it on the next one. Okay. And remember we have double burlap here. So you might want to do it in the middle and switch back and forth to the back of the, um, the back of the rim of the frame to the front rim of the frame. Okay. So that way, again, when you do that, you're creating depth. You want that depth. You don't want your um, reef to look flat. Okay. So you see how that looks there. And then we're going to do the same thing all the way around. Cut it to that length. Okay. And we did that one. So we're not going to do that one. We're going to move over to this side, which is good because see, this is the center pumpkin, right? And we want to make sure we get it on both sides of him. Okay. And we're going to move to the back frame this time. Front, back, front, back. All right. Now, if you have a frame that just has one um, level, then you don't have to worry about that. But you still want to move the pieces once you put it on the frame. You can still move it either to the left or the right or the front and the back. So even if this was all still one level, I would still be able to move it either left or right to a certain extent. Okay. Now, some of these might be a little long, but I'm going to leave them like that because I have to re replump everything. Once I get everything situated, those ribbons will be the last thing I cut because I want to make sure that once the burlap is plumped up, you see how this one's standing up better? Because this underneath here, this burlap is plumped out. Over here, not so much. I still have to plump and mess with that to get that to stand out, okay? And then you also want them going in different directions. You don't want it all going in the same direction, right? So we're gonna do a couple more of those. And um, like I said, just, Whatever feels good, when you put it there, if you're happy with the placement, go for it. Even if it's not um, with the rules that I'm kind of laying out here or the guidelines that I'm laying out here, that's okay. You do whatever makes you feel good. Whatever makes you feel good, you're happy with the placement of it, don't worry about the um, logistics of it so much. Just do what makes you happy, okay? Because that's the best wreath. It's what makes you happy. What makes you smile, what brightens your day. So this process is about woo-saw and about you <laughs> and what you like, unless you're making it for a client. And then it's about what they like. But being that you're the artist, it's still about what you like because this is a form of art. Okay. This is a form of art. Don't let nobody tell you that arts and craft is not art. Everything that is has been created. Is stuff like that, that deals with art, you know? Everything that we do or have or is a creation. A chair, a house, everything. There's nothing that we put our hands on that wasn't created by somebody. And that's art too. So, you know, a lot of people think that art is just paintings. No, nope. art is being creative using your imagination and then bringing those ideas to, to the forefront, okay? There's all types of different levels of art. And making wreaths is an art. Okay? Anytime you're making something, it's art. All right. All right. So, as you can see how that's come about. Um, actually, I kind of like them all going in the same direction. See, I'm breaking my own little rule now. Um, this one's standing up a little bit. Like I said, we will fix some of the stragglers. This might be a little too short because I kind of wanted to tuck under. I think that looks kind of nice. And then I'll come in with some turquoise ribbon as well to um, kind of round it off, finish it off. And then I'm probably going to put one more pumpkin somewhere in here aside from the three pumpkins I've stated previously that I'm going to put here, here, and here. Okay. So that is going to go there. He's going to go there. And 
Uh, let's see what else. Oh, we could get some of this. And so this is where the creativity part comes in, because then you get to say, okay, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, that won't hurt if I put that. That would be nice, right? And it's all creative, but you know, this one here be a nice pop of color because it has that purple in it actually at the top because you want to balance it. Remember I said about the balance thing now. We can put this right at the top here um, to balance it. We, we already have purple at the bottom. So let's put this here to balance it at the top. So a hint of purple. And then my acorns are hiding and I don't like that. So we're going to push that more toward the center. Okay, so when this pumpkin goes here, I want these acorns to wrap right around that pumpkin like that somehow. Okay, so that's because that's at the tip, okay, at the top. So we want that. And I have a little bit more foliage here that we're probably going to stick right in here with a piece of string here. Some more of the tube deco mush take a piece of that this is gonna be a long video y'all and i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry it's probably gonna be a, a one and a two just because it's probably gonna be pretty long um but i wanted to really take you through the whole thing i didn't want to rush it so that is why i'm taking you through each part so you can see it as in real time you know so we're going to put this little portion here. We're going to just tie it right here to the spine. Tie it to the front. Right here. I know this is going to sound crazy, but I love the sound of all the ruffling of a... <laughs> I'm a sound, obviously, I'm an audio engineer. I'm a sound geek. So um, I love the sound of all the ruffling feathers and leaves and stuff. Yeah, that makes me very happy. I know I'm weird, but that's okay. We all got our, our thing, right? And I am filming with um, my new phone. My honey went and bought me that iPhone that I was eyeballing. I didn't know he was going to actually go buy it, but he did. Um, I'm grateful for it. I had the nerve to try to fuss a little bit. Talking about what you gonna buy that for? I don't know if I really wanted it. I just said I liked it, but I'm glad he bought it for it. He's so thoughtful. Bless him. Bless him, bless him. Okay. We're gonna tuck that ribbon just like that. So okay. This flower keep dipping down low. We're gonna have to do something about that in the morning. So just get everything kind of where you want it. And then when you get ready to do your final anchor down, that's when you'll be able to really get in there. Okay. So all these pieces are, are anchored down for the most part aside from those three pumpkins we keep discussing. Now this one, you see how at the top, the acorns are going up and then all the foliage, oh boy, Lord, it's a light, it's, it's late y'all. All of the flowers and accessories are swooping down and around. So we want this one to kind of hang off here down at the bottom underneath this acorn. I think that would symmetrically look nice, okay? So be careful with acorns. Um, pine cones and acorns, oh, pine cones. The acorns are not gonna cut you. Pine cones, be careful. Those little pines break off and get into your skin. And oh, honey, let me tell you, it is painful. I know, <laughs> done it. So, and also a lot of, depending on where you live, you may not even have to go buy any of all this type of stuff. You might be able to go ahead outside where you live and find it in nature. Okay, just make sure it ain't got no bugs on it. We don't like one of bugs on the reef, right? So, you know, you can't see what I'm doing under here, but I'm just um, securing this down to the reef form. Uh, trying to get it through the different deco mesh le levels and all the other stuff I have under here. Okay, and then I'm also going to show you guys how to cover the back of your wreath so that, like I said, it looks neat. We will be cutting all of the zip ties. And again, 
like I've stated previously, you don't have to use zip ties. You are more than welcome to use what you want. Um, you can use, um, like I said, a lot of people decide to go ahead and use pipe cleaners, which are these. Okay, so I haven't showed you, but I think I did. These are pipe cleaners. This is a kind of a thick one. I do like the thick ones better because I feel they hold better. Um, some people just use, you know, just whatever they want. Use whatever makes you happy. Whatever is easier for you to use that's going to make it um, come out the way you want it to come out, use that. Okay. Now this one is missing berry on this little stem, so we're going to just cut that off there. Okay. And so let's see. I'm thinking as I'm looking, y'all. Looking around to see what what else I can add to this. I pulled everything from my little stockpile <laughs> so that I can add it. Okay, so you see how these two flowers are dark. So I want to add this one because it's dark like that. But I want to add it up there for, like I said, for balance. Okay, and I might even go and steal a, a flower out of my bouquet downstairs that's turquoise. So again, we can create that balance. But, um, so this flower is going to go up here somewhere, you know, or we could even put it down here. Let me see. Trial and error, right? No, nope, it's going up higher. Okay, so it's going to go up here. So we're going to anchor this down too. So if I can reach in here and grab it. So once you start to um, build up your flowers and embellishments, it becomes more and more difficult. <laughs> To anchor things because you've got so much going on underneath your um, your form here. So just be patient. Make sure that you get it in there, okay? Just be patient. All right. And we're going to straighten things back out. Like I said, we're not going to fret over... Um, not going to fret over this pumpkin. That pumpkin's going to be stabilized tomorrow as well as these two. Okay. We've got some more foliage here. I like to put the bulk of my foliage on this left side. Why? I don't know. And does it make it hard to hang up? Sometimes it does because, you know, gravity. So I have a little method of how I hang it up to make sure that the top of the wreath still stays at the top when it's actually hung and when we get to that point i'll i'll uh, walk you through that process as well but right now let's just get this part done so i'm working on tying down some of these little ends of this little um, leaf that i'm getting ready to attach and i'm doing that again with this deco mesh um, tubing the smaller one and see, just tie that off there, bring it around to the front, and tie that there. All right, that looks like something. Now we're going to cut that right up. Oh, yep, look at that. That's going to help hold up this pumpkin too. So let's get down to the frame of it. Get down to the nitty gritty of it here. And we're going to tie it right there. And sometimes, like right now, how you see the tubing is not long enough. This is what I love about this, this nickel mesh tubing is you can just cut another piece, right? And attach it to there and it's not going to come off. It's going to hold on for dear life. You see this here? So the part that I'm going to attach it to is right here. And I'm just going to tie it on there. Just knot it. Double knot that on there. And it's not gonna come off. And then I have an extension there. And um, I gave myself definitely more than what I need. That way I won't have to struggle so hard to attach it. So, you just double tie that. And again, make sure it ain't going nowhere. Okay, so now I have this long string where I can go ahead and place it and tie it around the frame. Yeah, I wanted to do this in real time. There might be some parts I speed up, like when I'm actually making the initial wreath form. 
um, deco mesh form on there, but in the, I really wanted to do it in real time because I wanted you to see how much time it takes, you know? And some people say, well, I didn't know it was gonna take that long. Well, and the time, the time also can, is also um, depending upon what you wanna do. How lavish do you want your wreath? You know, so that also is something that you want to consider when doing this is how much time do I want to put into this? Do I want a simple wreath? Do I want a nice lavish wreath? You know, um, how many layers do I want? So is this, this type of stuff is good to think about when you're getting ready to construct your wreath so that you have some type of direction on what's needed time-wise, what's needed material-wise. Because when you go to the store, you don't want to have to run to the store, come back from the store, run back to the store. I mean, usually sometimes you always have to do at least one more trip. That goes without saying. But for the most part, you don't want to have to do that, right? So what I'm also doing, if you're watching me, I'm using this deco mesh um, tubing that I just tied to that little foliage to tie down my pumpkin. Okay, I just wrap it around him. I'm gonna tie him down. And that might hold it, it might not. If it doesn't, like I said, tomorrow, don't you worry, honey. We're gonna tack him down. But let's just see how it does. Okay. All right, so that's that side. And I went with more orange colors than I normally would. Normally, well, no, normally I do a lot of orange, but it's normally um, a lot of my other colors as well. Now I had some, I had some other sparkly, also orange, but sparkly ribbon that I wanted to add. Oh, here it is. Okay, I found it, y'all. I found it. Look how pretty that is. And this is more of a almost burnt color. Now I have to decide where I want to put it. Most likely it's going to go up there because I don't have enough to go around the whole perimeter of this this wreath. And this one, I think I'm going to have to just go straight down the center. We'll see. We'll see. Sometimes you don't know until you get started. So I'm actually going to tie this one down with some of the ribbon already in there. Okay. Here we are. Don't just tie that down. And you won't even be able to tell because those are sticking out and it just looks really pretty anyway. Okay. Now you can either go underneath the burnt orange or on top. It's all up to you um, on how you do your ribbon placement. Um, I'm not sure I want to do that. I might even want to go cross from cross to cross. Cross to cross. I think I will do that. Okay. I think that's what make me happy. So, and this is also a an opportunity to put more of the other color orange that I have here. They're all in the orange family, but they look really nice when you pair all the different colors of orange together, right? What do they call it? Monochromatic? I don't know if that's what they call it, but I think so. Okay, so we're going to tie down that little ribbon with these and we don't need much you know just a little bit here and there just a little bit because we want to make sure we have enough to do the whole thing okay so because remember when people walk up to your door that's the first thing they're going to see if you're putting this on your door now um you can use duffel meshes with tablescapes as well on your tables i didn't do that this year but you can okay Plump that up like that. And then so we went to zig that way. Now we're going to come back across this way. Okay. Remember, this is where this pumpkin's going. Remember, these pumpkins are lined up. Okay. So we want to make sure we leave a spot right there. So we don't want to cover him up. Because we want him to show. He's showing off. Now, I'm going to skip one or two I think I'll do. We're going to skip. I don't know if I want to skip under or over. Well, I 
could go that way. I could go that way, and then that way, and then that. Maybe I'll do that. Let me stand up and see how that would look. I don't want it to be, well, I want it to be busy. Don't get me wrong, because, you know, this is my personality. I'm, I don't mind busy, but I don't want it to be busy. Okay. So the best thing to do when you're not sure is just to lay it out and see which way you like better, right? So I did that. Do I want it to go left, right, left, right, left, right like that. Or do I want it to be on the outside? Remember, we have two, two of the um, levels of the framing, the inside ring and then the bigger outside ring. So do you want it to go on the inside ring or the outside ring? It's always important to remember. With this one, oh, so confused, y'all. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm gonna go like that because Plumpkin still has to be able to go here. I don't wanna cover him. Okay. And being that I started tying it with the orange, the burnt orange, I'm gonna continue with that. fell off my table okay so, don't worry about that pumpkin y'all we're gonna glue him on he's the only one him and the one at the top are the only ones i think i'm gonna have to glue on but the rest of these i think are doing quite well i think are very stabilized okay and we want the, the ribbon i love ribbon that can conform when you bend it this one i just want to just kind of stick out because these ones don't have any type of um, formity to it so these just kind of hang however so this one i definitely want to have form okay so and we're just going back and forth as you can see back and forth okay so the next spot sorry y'all my allergies are just kicking my butt this week and i think i was getting over a little cold as well so Bear with me. No, I sound completely suggest congested. Completely congested. That's because I am. I've been taking Theraflu um, and allergy pills <laughs> like consistently. And I'm trying not to do that because I really don't like taking medication. But I don't think I'd be able to, to really focus without it at this point. I'm hoping that, you know, it gets a little easier. Just a little bit. And remember that pumpkin's going to be going there. And I'm going to actually have him, this pumpkin's going to be at the bottom of the wreath. Because remember, when you put it on the door, people are not going to, I mean, they can see it here, but it's not going to be really, really. So you want it so people can see it. That's the whole point of making your wreath, right? You want it to be visible. So this is going to go back here. <sighs> what do y'all think? It's coming out all right. This is the first wreath I've done that I haven't really like completely planned out, you know. But I'm I'm happy with it thus far. Happy with it. We'll see. It's a little un a little un 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 unorthodox. Normally I do kind of traditional wreaths, but this time I just kind of wanted to do a sporadic wild wreath. <laughs> okay, so that's that, and. This is the last part here. Let's see if I can't make it make it over somehow that way. Yeah, I'll do that. Make it go that way there. Wait, that way, that way. So this one needs to come more forward. Okay. And this one we can just, well, to keep with consistency do it with this one even though we don't need to because there's one here that we could have tied it down with but we don't want this one to be lacking an orange piece a burnt orange piece so we're gonna go ahead and tie that down there okay my friends i'm so glad you all have joined me today i love this is stuff right up my little alley i love doing stuff like this and showing people how to do it you know so I've even considered teaching a couple of classes on 
wreath tutorials because I've been asked by several people if I wouldn't mind doing a class and um, you know I think that would be a fun project to do. To, I love to see the little light bulb go on in people's eyes you know like you see when they get something like oh man I get it you know that really makes me happy so and I would have never considered myself to be like a teacher because Lord knows uh, <laughs> school has not always been my thing that still has not always been my thing. But, never too late, right? So, if you're alive, it's never too late. At some point, it becomes too late. But if you're alive and breathing, it's never too late. So, my little... We'll put him... We do want him on the outside, kind of sticking out. So, we'll have to glue him the way we want him. But... Overall, as you can see, ignore all the little white pieces because remember, those are going to be cut off, okay? We're not going to see those. And then we're going to also um, mess with those a little bit. And we'll just mess with the deco much tomorrow to get it plumped up and where we want everything as far as um, space goes, okay? And I might add a little bit of burnt orange down here with this too tomorrow and um we gotta have somewhere for our other pine cone we could put them right in here between these two pumpkins like that what y'all think should we put them there or should we put them where's that other acorn where's my acorn at oh lord we got lots of acorns Acorn got eight up. Oh, there it is. There he is. Okay. So maybe, being that there's a little space here, we can put it right to look at that. You see that? You see how that fit right there? But we're going to anchor him tomorrow because I'm going to get it. So I'm tired. It's been a long day, y'all. And so we will, we will do the anchoring tomorrow when the sun is out. Okay. But there we are. There's our wreath. And like I said, we'll do the hot gluing and anchoring. There's only several pieces that we're going to actually have to do that with. This center pumpkin here. And I'm probably going to have some spiral ribbon or something coming down. We're also going to put, um, I haven't forgotten about the turquoise deco mesh or ribbon. We've got to add some more turquoise because we have turquoise in the main piece. We have turquoise here in this flower. So I might pull another flower to add to that side for balance, as well as we have to find some, some turquoise ribbon of some sort, which I'm sure I have somewhere in this craft room because I have all of it, all the colors. So that's what we're going to work on tomorrow. Okay. So join me and where I'll be back. Should I say I'll just be back because I'll probably just continue it from where we are now. So let me, let me get a better look at it. As you can see. Oh, God, y'all, this video is long. It's probably going to be a four-part series, okay? So you can see him. Happy fall, y'all. We don't want the flowers to cover that. We want to see the sign, right? Happy fall, y'all. And we're just going to go around this so you can see. There we go. See all the pine cones in there. See all the pumpkins. So all the stuff that we've put in our little beautiful wreath. And we're going to add turquoise tomorrow, y'all. I'll see you soon after. Okay.